If you're not quite sure, this video will help clear up any confusion. Hey everyone, this is Coach Mandy, and in this video, I will be explaining the scapular plane and why it's so important for your training. Now, before I get into detail, I wanna explain why this video is so important, especially for a swimmer and a swim parent, so keep watching. The first thing is you're gonna get a basic understanding of what the scapular plane is and how it's related to your training. Secondly, this video will help you address any limitations you may have in your shoulder or maybe a possible overuse injury that could be related or unrelated to your swimming. And lastly, how this looks when you put it into action. Full disclaimer though, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not here to diagnose or treat any issues you may have, but at any point in this video, you start to feel shoulder pain and an assessment I'm about to show, I would advise that you seek a medical professional to find out exactly what that issue may be. Now let's start with the basic understanding of what the scapular plane is. First, I want you to visualize two planes of reference. The first one is the frontal plane. If you look over your left and right shoulder, I want you to visualize a sheet of glass directly on that line, and that is your frontal plane. The sagittal plane is running perpendicular of that plane. Almost imagine a sheet of glass running the midline of my body, and that is your sagittal plane. So based on those two planes, the scapular plane is slightly forward leaning towards the sagittal plane because your shoulders already have a natural curve to them. They're not directly on the frontal plane unless you're manipulating that. So the natural curvature is leaning slightly forward towards the sagittal plane. Now the scapular plane is where your shoulder is easily able to move. It's much more mobile in this angle versus being directly on the frontal plane or behind it. All right, you guys, so just as I explained earlier, I want you to visualize that frontal plane again over your left and right shoulder. And I want you to first start off with perfect posture, keeping everything in alignment before we move forward. Now, the first position I want you to try is lifting both elbows as high as you can on that frontal plane. So this is where I can go. This is about my limit. You're probably the same. And I'm gonna show you this from the side view. So right here, directly on the plane. Now, the second position I want you to try is actually lifting your elbows behind the plane. So it looks like this from the side. So just lifting it behind the plane. You'll probably feel that this is much more restrictive. Now, the third position I want you to try is actually placing one hand over the other. Avoid twisting your palms, keeping them facing down. And what I want you to do is lift your elbows as far forward in front of that plane as possible and just kind of Move through this a few times. You'll probably feel that your shoulders feel relaxed and light and you don't feel any kind of sticking points. And I'll show you this from the side as well. Right here. Okay, so this feels very easy. And the reason why is if I stop midway, you can see that my shoulder and my humerus are in that scapular plane. And to give you reference in freestyle, starting with the first position, being directly on it, this is what it looks like in freestyle. That arm is directly on the plane. This is where you're over rotated. The second position, which felt more limited, you were pulling behind the plane. This is what it looks like in freestyle. That arm is wrapping over your back and getting twisted with, with this position. The third position that felt much easier was over the frontal plane, or I'm sorry, forward in front of that plane on the scapular plane. And this is what it looks like in freestyle. Okay, whether the arm is bent or straight, it has everything to do with your shoulder and your humerus. Now everyone's flexibility is a little bit different, so your scapular plane can be a little bit up and elevated, but as long as it's not going directly on the frontal plane or going behind. As long as the shoulder is fixed in that position. Okay, you guys, so that's the assessment. You can use this for your practice just to give you a reference of how to move forward in the water. All right, you guys. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful and informative. 
And remember, in your training, if you feel comfortable with moving with a straight arm for your high side arm versus a bent arm, go with it as long as your scapula is within the plane and you're not moving out of it or behind it. That's the main thing. And as long as you're keeping that fixed and releasing the arm relaxed with a soft shoulder, you're heading towards the right direction. All right, you guys, if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more.